In this video, let us look at what this Carhartt's notch is. Okay, Carhartt's notch or Carhartt's notch or Carhartt's notch if R is silent. Okay, so basically where do you see this? You will see it on an audiogram, pure tone audiometry. This is pure tone audiometry. In um, otosclerosis or otospongiosis, you see this. Okay, so where does uh, Carhartt's notch, where will you see in the audiogram, in what? In otosclerosis or otospongiosis, right? Both are same. Now, what exactly is this problem, otosclerosis or otospongiosis? So, you can see here, this is the ear, right? In the ear, you have, in the middle ear, you have three bones, malleus, incus and stapes, right? So, now some problem with the stapes, right? So, what happens? The stapes... Let's zoom it a little and see. So here you can see that there is sclerosing, right? Hardening of the stapes, right? Foot plate of stapes. So this is otosclerosis. So what happens when there is vibration, sound comes in and there is vibration. This vibration does not get passed on to the inner ear, right? So, there is fixation of the ossicle, especially of the stapes here, right? So, what is the problem here? The bone, correct? The bone uh, problem. So, uh, the ossicle's problem. So, what exactly should be the problem? Conductive deafness should be there, right? The conductive deafness. Why? This is a problem with the middle ear. But also, it is affecting the inner ear. So, there can be sensory uh, deafness also. So, what are we talking about? We are talking about Carhartt's notch, right? So, basically, where is this notch? The audiogram. So, here you can see this is the bone conduction, isn't it? This is the bone conduction, anything that looks like the ear, right? So, this is the left ear. So, definitely you can see this is the left ear. Right ear will be this side and left ear will be this side and this is bone conduction. In bone conduction, exactly at 2000 hertz, there is a dip. Okay, so this is called as Carhartt's notch. Okay, so as such air conduction has totally come down, bone conduction has come down at 2000 hertz maximum. Okay, so both of them have dipped, air conduction also has dipped, bone conduction also has dipped. Bone conduction has a specific dip at 2000 Hz. Other frequencies also have dipped, but at 2000 Hz it has have, it is having a deep dip, right? So you can understand, this is blue color, so blue color means what? Blue is uh, usually referred, uh, used for left ear, right? Blue is left ear, so blue color. So, otosclerosis in left ear, note dip at 2000 hertz in bone conduction, okay. How is it going people? Is it uh, okay for you? So, look at this one. This is normal audiogram, okay, we will keep it here. Normal audiogram, focus on the blue line because blue is the left. Let us say this is the air conduction, right, this is the air conduction definitely. Let us say bone conduction, air conduction are uh, overlapping, okay. Actually, bone conduction will be less than air conduction but in audiogram they kind of make sure that it comes at the same level they adjust the decibels so now what has happened in uh, otosclerosis let us look at that see now the air conduction has completely gone down right air conduction has completely decreased right air conduction has decreased so basically, what is the problem in otosclerosis? Conductive deafness, right? Conductive deafness will be there. Bone conduction also has come down. In different frequencies, different amount it has come down. But at 2000 hertz, it has come down the maximum. Why is that? Because normally, the ossicles are best at this 2000 hertz. Okay, that much you can remember. If you want more details, there is something like bone conduction has three components within it, like uh, distortional bone co uh, conduction, inertial bone conduction, osteotympanic bone conduction, etc. So, what happens? Uh, there is a resonance point of this ossicular chain. So, this ossicular chain, what you see here, these ossicles, malleus incus tapis, they have a specific resonance point. Okay, So, the loss happens at this resonance point. So, that is why 2000 hertz. Okay. So, you should know who Carhartt uh, or Carhartt is. Okay. So, this guy Raymond Carhartt, we are saying Carhartt because you have to write the spelling in the exam. Carhartt, Raymond Carhartt. So, basically this the Carhartt notch, right, of bone conduction. Where is it in bone conduction? Where is the notch? It is in bone conduction. Okay. At uh, 2000 hertz, 
<clears throat> in patients with otosclerosis okay he was he is also referred to as father of audiology you can see here oops you can see here okay let's get some more information on this kahat's notch so pure tone audiometry shows loss of air conduction okay so more loss is there in which one more loss is there in air conduction bone conduction can be normal or there can be dip in the bone conduction curve and the maximum dip can be at 2000 hertz okay that is kahart's notch what is this there is 5 decibel loss at 500 hertz 10 decibel at 1000 hertz 15 decibel at 2000 hertz so this is what it is at 2000 hertz it is 15 decibels that is why you have this kind of dip here isn't it let's use a blue because this is a left audiogram what do you say so here you can see this dip right kahart notch disappears after successful stepidectomy so if they remove the stapes right after successful stepidectomy if they remove the stapes bone this notch disappears that means there can be good conduction isn't it okay so if somebody asks you what is carhart's notch you will say it is seen in otosclerosis where <clears throat> the pure tone audiometry on the audiogram the bone conduction curve shows maximum loss at 2000 hertz that's all in this video bye bye this just one more point here guys that you see the air conduction has reduced right so the air conduction um so the person to hear they need higher intensity right so the decibel should be more that is why when somebody speaks loudly they can hear right and they can hear better in noisy environments because in noisy environment anyways anyways people will talk loudly okay people speak softly these people cannot hear this uh, feature is called as paracusis willisi so the person paracusis willisi look at the spelling double l is there double l is there and double i is also there so many i's are there in this willisi will i s i i okay paracusis willisi an otosclerotic patient hears better in noisy uh, environment did they miss the word environment than in quiet surroundings okay noisy than in quiet surroundings this is because normal person will raise his voice so mainly it's the decibels right so he needs more decibels okay in noisy surroundings so that is paracusis willisi okay